So thank you, Chairman, and good morning, everybody. This is my uh, pleasure to be here this morning to start uh, this first session uh, and to be able to present some of our recent work uh, we perform at CDLE10 in France. Um, first, I would like to thank uh, all the organizers for making these two days possible and for the, all the work uh, they have performed. Um, originally, my abstract was um, uh, about um, the characterization of lithium sulfur batteries uh, using tomography technique. But with this keynote, I, I tried, I found maybe more relevant to make it uh, maybe more general. Um, I will also try to uh, present uh, some uh, of my thoughts about um, the most important mechanism and some possible strategies we can, we can use. Uh, this work has been done at CEA, so with the support of uh, uh, many co-workers, but it has also been done through two collaborations we have in Grenoble, so with ESRF and LEPMI, with whom we, ask, we are collaborating for now a few years. So as we had this uh, a nice introduction and um, uh, all the, the um, uh, limiting uh, parameters and all the um, key mechanism has already been uh, presented and uh, nicely explained, I will not uh, really go into the details of um, all limitation, and um, you can also fi uh, already find in the literature some nice summary of uh, uh, all limitation on uh, what are the key mechanisms in the lithium sulfur batteries. Just I would like to maybe stop on some issues of the lithium sulfur chemistry, which I think uh, are interesting. Uh, first, I will uh, talk about sulfur solubility. So, as you may know, know sulfur dissolves in the organic electrolyte. Uh, so, with this, uh, we end up with self-discharge, but we also, uh, this also leads to uh, drastic morphology changes of the positive electrode during cycling. We also have uh, a sulfur poor thermal stability as compared to uh, Li2S, for example, and... Um, okay. We, um, looking at this, uh, the discharge mechanism, you all know that uh, sulfur reduction is going through multiple e electrochemical uh, reduction steps as well as chemical equilibria involving also the use of uh, the production of radicals. Uh, so this makes it really complex. And indeed, when you look at this uh, phase diagram, uh, we do not see any solid uh, intermediate species between uh, Li2S and sulfur. So everything goes into solution and there is a lot of uh, complex equilibrium. equilibria. Talking about radicals, it's known that uh, lithium polysulfide are highly reactive, especially with carbonates. Um, so with our cho choice of electrolytes is um, somehow limited. And we also face this problem for binders. And then I will not talk too much about uh, other problematics related to uh, insulating behavior on lithium metal uh, issues. This is, could already be uh, a big chapter. But I would like to show you here today uh, how uh, maybe to take advantages of this uh, issue. So first, if we look at sulfur solubility, it's great because if, uh, for example, we mix sulfur with lithium, we, we can uh, produce lithium polysulfide uh, in solution, so inorganic electrolyte. And this strategy has already been applied for as a catalyte system with some of, uh, for example, 3D current collector made of nanotubes. So we will try to see the pros and the cons of uh, solubility approach. We can also take advantage of the sulfur thermal stability, or low sulfur thermal stability, and uh, use this low melting point to produce um, sulfur carbon uh, composite, trying to infiltrate sulfur into micropores carbon, for example. And this is more a confinement approach. 
uh, that can be even enhanced if we uh, take the opportunity to um, um, take the advantage of uh, allied polysulfide reactivity with carbonate. And this uh, strategy has been applied for uh, artificial SCI formation. So we will try to see also the pro and the con of confinement approach. But what I want already to show you here is that uh, whatever the strategy, uh, we have a strong relationship between uh, carbon and electrolyte as compared to what is usually uh, observed in lithium ion. So we will come back to this point later. Uh, there is uh, also many issues in this lithium sulfur system, but we have also a uh, different way to take uh, the problem. And, uh, so first we uh, can start with a lithium metal anode, a sulfur positive electrode, and this is a conventional way to um, investigate lithium sulfur cell. It's um, a cell that is easily activated during the first discharge. Sulfur is easy, easy to handle and this system is giving the highest gravimetric energy density. But the cell uh, is, uh, the sulfur electrode doesn't contain any source of lithium, so we need to use a lithium metal anode. So the cells are in initially charged during activation, so this can uh, maybe be a problem. And we also know that um, this kind of uh, system can suffer from capacity fading. If we want to get rid of lithium metal, we can develop a lithium ion sulfur system using Li2S. Uh, which is also a conventional positive electrode um, preparation. So it's, this is great because cells are initially discharged during the activation and um, the positive electrode contains lithium, so we can combine the, the positive electrode with a silicon or carbon, for example. And this material is great, I like to ask, because it's also open uh, alternative electrode preparation. And I invite you to uh, listen to the talk of Alice tomorrow, so she will present some of uh, new methods to, uh, for electrode preparation. But this uh, material is uh, tricky because uh, Li2S is not so easy to handle due to possible H2S release. Uh, you will see that the um, first charge can be problematic. It's um, also accompanied with a lower mean voltage, so maybe uh, it will be more difficult to, get to, to go to a high gravimetric energy density. And at the end, we end up with the same uh, capacity fading as sulfur system. And we have a third approach that we call a catalyte approach, where we can combine the use of a 3D current collector, for example, and a dissolve polysulfide in the electrolyte. We don't need to prepare, this is great because we don't need to prepare any sulfur or Li2S electrode. We can go to lithium ion sulfur configuration because the electrolyte already contains uh, lithium source. And uh, we already show that this system uh, is giving a good uh, cyclability and a good rate capability. So looking at this uh, catalyte approach, this uh, has already been applied, for example, in uh, polysulfide semi-flow batteries, for example, by PNNL or Stanford, where they uh, combine a, a tank of uh, polysulfide and a lithium metal anode. They showed um, promising cycling data and a gravimetric and volumetric energy density of about uh, 100 watt hour per liter or gram. We also applied this strategy using um, a closed system, uh, so uh, not, not a submerged flow one, with using vertically aligned carbon nanotubes grown on uh, an aluminum foil. And um, this system was great because uh, these vertically aligned carbon nanotubes provide a light and stable structure for sulfur and Li2S accommodation during cycling. We also obtain relatively good rate capability up to 0 over uh, 2. Um, and I think this, um, this is one of the advantages of using uh, a catalyte that you can maybe go to higher rates. Um, we also obtain good capacity retention at least during uh, first 50 cycles with high overall capacity. But we all know that uh, sulfur solubility in the electrolyte is limited. And assuming about seven moles of sulfur in the electrolyte at maximum, based on our calculation, we are limited to um, uh, 
less than 200 watt hour per kilogram. We expect not more than uh, this value. So this solution may, may not be um, good for high gravimetric energy density. The, and so um, you also, th this catalyte approach, uh, as I mentioned, is requiring high sulfur concentration, high electrolyte amount. So at the end, it brings a, a low gravimetric energy density. And we also have the challenge of having polysulfide directly in contact with um, the lithium anode. We can go the other way around and uh, try to confine sulfur into microporous carbon. And some uh, of past work have shown that the use of small enough pore size of below two nanometers allow to fully confine sulfur. And in this case, sulfur is uh, existing at uh, S2, S4 um, uh, chain uh, structure and can be directly converted through solid-solid conversion to Li2S. And in this case, for example, the author claims that this kind of uh, materials are um, cycling with carbonate electrolyte, for example. So the, the mechanism here is, is different because normally with uh, cycling sulfur electrode with ether, we have uh, these two familiar two discharge plateau be between 2.4 and 2 volts. But when uh, confining sulfur into micropores, which are small enough, or for example, using carbonates, the voltage curve is different. We end up here with only one plateau at lower voltage, which may be um, uh, characteristic for the difficult solid-solid uh, reaction, solid-solid um, conversion. So this uh, confinement approach is um, giving a lower voltage, which may be a problem if we want to go to a high, high energy density. And also due to uh, carbon materials limitation, uh, the uh, sulfur content is usually um, relatively low, so of about 55%. But I think we will have a nice presentation on, on, this, uh, on this topic during these two days. In our um, uh, at CEA, so we try also a, a different way to confine sulfur, and in this case, we did not uh, aim at infiltrating sulfur into uh, carbon. We um, rather uh, use a chemical anchoring of disulfide bond into carbon nanotubes. So we synthesize our own precursor, so it was a diazonium di 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 salt uh, containing disulfide bonds that we grafted on nanotubes. We check the grafting using XPS and then we cycle these electrodes uh, into coin cell. Uh, comparing these materials with pure uh, uh, carbon nanotubes and also nanotubes simply mixed with the same molecule but not grafted. And we have um, seen a much higher capacity retention as compared to simply mixing uh, the active materials, for example. And we attributed this uh, higher capacity retention to the absence, um, possible absence of uh, morphological change due to non-solubility, uh, no, the non-solubility of the materials. But now here the challenge is really to go to high surface capacity because uh, we need definitely to increase the amount of uh, disulfide bond we load on, on these materials. So now, um, with these two uh, opposite approach, uh, should we go, should we rather focus to solubility or non-solubility? In fact, I think uh, we are mostly all of us uh, in between. So this was already nicely explained by, by, by Gregory that um, there is an uh, alternative uh, solid and uh, soluble phase formation, starting with uh, sulfur that uh, is converted to polysulfide and then Li2S is formed and then reoxidized during uh, the, the charge until the formation of uh, beta sulfur. But and this work was also uh, confirmed, this fact was also confirmed by the recent work of uh, Owen, who proposed a phase diagram of uh, between sulfur, Li2S and electrolyte. And now the question is, should we go to more or less solubility? Uh, there is more and more work on the low solubility system, which are great because it allows to reduce the uh, electrolyte amount and to go to higher gravimetric energy density. 
But here the challenge is really to um, tune, tune the carbon materials in order to uh, allow the solid phase coexistence, uh, S8 and LA2S. So we need to work on this carbon and uh, some, uh, for example, I took the, the recent work of uh, Caskill Group working on um, uh, new carbon materials. And we really need this high surface area and hyper volume to allow this solid phase coexistence. Going to lower solubility, we can also use polysulfide non-solvent and, for example, a fluorinated solvent or solvent in salt uh, has been applied. But in this case, um, we, this uh, strategy is uh, definitely linked with the requirement on carbon. And uh, I will come back to this just after, but uh, this, um, the use of this non-solvent uh, definitely require your work on carbon as well. And so far I would say that the ch challenge when going to lower electrolyte amount may be now the uh, electrolyte depletion and the capacity retention. On this slide I didn't want to give any uh, best electrolyte composition, just I wanted to show that uh, there is a strong relationship between carbon and electrolyte that we don't need to uh, or give um, a general best electrolyte for lit or lithium sulfur cell, just we need to select the suitable electrolyte for each electrode. And it's really a couple between uh, carbon materials and electrolyte that makes sense. For example, using simple methods for electrode preparation, we uh, already showed that uh, high solvation ability solvent may be better, but when going to uh, more uh, architecture carbon, uh, the use of low viscosity solvent may be uh, much more interesting. And now go, going to low, higher solubility system, uh, we already show that the use of non-woven carbon paper can, uh, be, can allow to uh, provide, for example, uh, uh, high electroly uh, higher electrolyte reservoir. So this is um, a substrate that is uh, much better for that as compared to aluminum foil. Uh, we uh, have the full dissolution of sulfur during the, the first uh, plateau. Then we have maximum uh, sulfur and we uh, have shown that no more sulfur is existing at the positive electrode at a maximum resistance. And then uh, we go to Li2S formation. And this uh, non-woven carbon paper is also great to provide a efficient electronic um, network. But this uh, material is um, too, in the present form, too thick and too uh, heavy to allow for high gravimetric energy density. What we can do is, may, is to tune this uh, carbon network, and this is what we, uh, we have done with our um, colleagues from uh, fuel cells. They were able to produce GDL-type uh, carbon paper with on-demand carbon loading, specific surface and porosity. So this work uh, was uh, interesting because we could go to high um, aerial capacity and also to high um, capacity per gram of cathode. But now uh, still we have the trade-off between energy density and cyclability due to lithium metal uh, issue and uh, consumption during cycling as well as electrolyte depletion. So as it was mentioned in the uh, previous presentation, uh, capacity retention is really connected to these two, two parameters. Now, going, coming back to the initial uh, um, point of uh, my uh, presentation, uh, we have performed tomography uh, characterization at different, um, different configuration. But I will start with uh, the beginning. We uh, started the work through collaboration with uh, German teams from TUB, IMTEC, and uh, Ulm University doing ex situ tomography. And so in this work, we looked at uh, um, uh, pristine electrodes and also age electrodes that we uh, cycle for uh, one, two, or ten cycles. And uh, with this work, we were able to um, look at the morphology change of the positive electrodes after different cycle number. We were able to show sulfur redistribution uh, in, within the positive electrodes 
uh, during the first cycles. So uh, with uh, some of electrode morphology we use, uh, we have really a big change of uh, uh, the electrode composition, and especially morphology during cycling. And uh, we were also able to compare um, different kinds of current collector. We uh, also applied in situ tomography in our in house uh, equipment, uh, tomography equipment at CEA. For that, we uh, uh, had to, to, to tune a bit the cell design. We were able to, to um, uh, characterize uh, age sample, including lithium. Uh, using this uh, cell design. I will not go too much into the details of uh, this part because uh, the cell design we had to use with this uh, in our equipment may not be re representative enough. Today I will uh, mostly focus on operando tomography that we perform at ESRF uh, and we were able with um, this um, analysis to perform tomography on the full cell during uh, true operando characterization. So let me talk about more about this uh, measurement. So this is the kind of cell design, we, uh, simple cell design we, we used. An aluminum uh, can uh, with a, a sulfur electrode, the same as I presented before, so a non-woven carbon felt casted with sulfur um, and a liquid electrolyte. This is a kind of electrochemical profile we obtain, so not so far from what is expected, even if we uh, observe some connection problem during the, the charge related to the experiment. We were able to perform uh, XRD analysis on the full uh, cell uh, stack, on the full stack. Uh, with a good resolution, uh, so layer by layer, performing XRD measurement layer by layer. But more importantly, we were able to monitor the use, uh, the morphological change of uh, both electrodes, sulfur and electrode, uh, lithium electrode operando. So uh, this is the kind of uh, picture we obtain from the, the cell. So we can clearly see the carbon felt uh, separator on lithium layer on the top. And uh, with this uh, operando absorption tomography technique, we were able to follow the sulfur morphology, uh, positive electrode morphology, and uh, lithium morphology during cycling. So starting with the initial uh, picture of the cell, uh, pristine cell, we were uh, then able to follow uh, to follow sulfur mapping and lithium mapping uh, within the full uh, stack, so within the full cell, and also over time. So I mean during cycling, and this is the kind of map we can obtain. And for example, we were able to uh, follow sulfur uh, deposition and uh, distribution within the positive electrode and we confirm that sulfur is indeed confined into the nanocarbon binder domain. So in, on the layer which is casted on the non-woven carbon paper. So this is interesting w w when aiming for example at uh, material or electrode design because it means that maybe all the, um, uh, the carbon paper uh, we, we have uh, additionally to that may not be so in some interesting. And we were also able to perform lithium mapping and to observe it morphology change during cycling. Here it's at 100 depths of discharge. It's already um, inhomogeneous. And then when we uh, plate again lithium, we observed lots of inhomogeneities and the layer was getting really sick, highly porous after two cycles only. So this is not really a good news. But in fact, uh, and this was even getting worse and worse during cycling. Here, I would say that we face a problem of our uh, cell design, that we were not able to control uh, well the pressure that is applied on lithium. So we designed a, another um, cell for an, another experiment where we were able to control, um, to perfectly control the pressure we applied on the full stack, so on lithium. Uh, 
this experiment has been done at ESRF as well, using a, a glass type uh, cell and with a spring enabling to reproduce the, the pressure we have either in a coin cell or in put cell or even in stack uh, by changing this, uh, this spring. In this new experiment, so I will not go into the detail of uh, these results because uh, they are just fresh and uh, data processing is ongoing, but we were also able to perform uh, X-ray diffraction tomography, so having one XRD pat pattern per each point of the battery. So with this technique, it's really powerful because we, have a, we can uh, do a full quantitative analysis of, uh, for example, sulfur within the cell and um, uh, to do some uh, quantification uh, analysis. And now we have this representative tool for material design, uh, which, uh, so even if we applied it on the non-woven non carbon paper, uh, can be really interesting to uh, investigate other materials, for example, uh, other carbon paper, uh, microprodus carbon, and also um, protected lithium or uh, architecture lithium electrodes. So with this slide, I would like to conclude uh, on the lithium sulfur uh, system. Um, what I would uh, as propose uh, in, th in this uh, keynote to, to give maybe my thought about this system. Uh, it's an amazing and exciting system for chemists. It may be a nightmare for a R&D scientist. Uh, and in any case, uh, there is a, a, a still a lot of limitations that we need to to overcome, it will mention about capacity retention and also rate capability. There is still a long way to go, but um, I think uh, we had recently um, major progress on promising advance and I'm confident and uh, I think we will have nice uh, uh, present. This will be confirmed by the two days on the nice presentation which are coming. And with this slide, I would like to uh, thank co-workers uh, especially Guillaume, who is doing his PhD on tomography together with uh, ESRF team. So uh, I also thank uh, Gavin Vaughan. Uh, I would like also to thank Lucas Ilke, who has done all the ex situ work on um, oral electrodes, and also uh, co workers from LEPMI with who we are collabor collaborating uh, for a few years now. And I would like to thank you for your attention. We have five or ten minutes for questions if anyone would uh, like to start us. So, John. You mean for uh, this kind of non-woven carbon paper or for... Whatever you, yeah, whatever you looked at, but how did the amount of sulfur coming out of the carbon evolve with the cycle? I think it will be related to the electrolyte amount and electrolyte uh, sulfur amount. Yeah, first on two cycles, and I know this is some, uh, definitely this will be something to look at now with these tools. At, uh, we aim with this additional experiment to look at age cell for 100 cycles, for example. It was not possible due to some technical problem, but definitely this will be the good things with this uh, tool. Just a question at the, the end there. Uh, 
Um, in, in fact, our non-woven carbon paper is rather 200 micron. So it's thick, still it's really thick, but uh, it's not two millimeter. But uh, maybe it was um, a problem of uh, scale because it's not my, uh, millimeters, it's just a, a pixel, uh, voxel size. Um, so in this system, for sure, we see sulfur dissolution. And maybe I can come. Oh no, okay, no problem. Um, in this glass cell, we were able to see uh, sulfur diffusion from the cathode. And as proposed, I think uh, this could be interesting, maybe to compare um, different electrolyte or different carbon, and to see if there is an effect using this tool uh, on the on the diffusion uh, of polysulfide. And um, I think maybe using a, a thinner carbon paper will not help to uh, confine sulfur, but, but as I said, uh, the nanocarbon binder domain is really the key to um, trap, to confine, even if not complete, the, the polysulfide. Have any more questions? Uh, just one at the back there, yes. Yeah. Yes, thank you for the nice talk. I see in the Oblando tomography characterization, the separator was around 300 micrometer. So how about the electrolyte absorb in the separator? I think, uh, how about the electrolyte sulfur ratio in this cell? And the second question is about the redistribution of sulfur particle. Have you seen the sulfur dissolve simultaneously or uh, the, one, uh, the one attached to the uh, current collector will be dissolved first. And also it will show after the first cycle it will redistribute. It, it will be happen for the second, third or fourth cycle for the redistribution. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, definitely in this uh, initial configuration, the electrolyte to sulfur ratio is too high. Uh, we just take uh, a well-known system, uh, a system that we know well for this experiment. And now uh, the goal here, we, 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 you could see that we were using this uh, polyolefin type non-woven separator as an electrolyte reservoir. It's also because we aimed at uh, looking at um, the electrolyte with uh, other techniques, trying to underst understand and to detect the polysulfide in the electrolyte. Uh, this is not results I'm showing here, but we were aiming at having this electrolyte reservoir. In future tests, we can just remove this and uh, uh, lower the electrolyte to sulfur ratio for sure. For the second three uh, question, it was about I'm interested in the sulfur redistribution. The yes, if yeah. it was starting from the current collector or... Yeah. So which part will be dissolved first? The, the, this particle near the current collector or this attached to the separator? In fact, in our case, it's difficult because we have most of the sulfur particles on the top of the non-woven carbon paper. This would be interesting to look on maybe alu aluminum foil. Yeah. And also, have you tried to do many cycle to see the, uh, the sulfur will be redistributed every cycle, or is some general principle for this phenomenon? Yeah. This um, I can maybe talk more about ex situ measurement because I am, as I mentioned, we aim at this with operando measurement, but due to technical problem, we were we were not able to. Um, uh, look at this uh, prolonged cycle cell, but with ex situ we have seen that most of the change, um, at least with our electrode uh, design, morphology, happens during the first cycles. Then you still have some uh, evolution of the sulfur distribution during the cycling, but most of the change on uh, sulfur impregnation into the carbon paper already happened during the first cycles. And this is this is accompanied by, by a high uh, initial capacity decay and then stabilization. Perhaps we can take one more question before the break, if anyone has one. Yeah. Uh, 
Mani out in the middle there. With our um, electrode design, we have, as I mentioned, full dissolution of sulfur into the electrolyte. So this is um, responsible for sulfur redistribution during the first charge, but also for uh, sulfur diffusion into the separator. I think the, it's difficult to answer to this question because we are using high electrolyte uh, to sulfur ratio. <coughs> so we have, I think, enough space for sulfur solubility. This is the problem. Well, maybe I can uh, ask one last question and just change the, the, the track slightly and move towards the anode. So you touched on the fact that you were using those techniques to look at protected anodes. Have you seen any improvement in the plating and stripping comparing the, the, the results you saw two cycles to protected anodes or is that work that you're about to start? Yeah, we are uh, about to start. It's, yeah. It was uh, just um, proof of concept of yeah, this tool yeah. and this would be highly interesting to, to look I, at. For me, I think the, the power of these in situ tomography techniques is on the anode side because of the air sensitivity of the materials. So, yeah. but for example, we are really happy that we managed to do this pressure control uh, system. Experiments, yeah. yeah. Good. So thanks, Celine, again. Thank you. And I think we have a break for 30 minutes for teas and coffees now. Great.